The high mountains of Snowdonia are surrounded on three sides by sea. A breathtaking recipe for generating a weather spectacle that will challenge the best of photographers. Resulting from several visits to the national park, now this classic view of Snowdon was taken on different days over several years. It demonstrates clearly the impact of weather on a view. A couple, note, have a strong foreground that are sharp, as well as the background. More about that in a moment. Predicting weather patterns. Now that's more important in landscape photography than photo technique on its own, but one cannot do without either. A ride on the Talaslin Railway might be the best answer for a wet day. Now if you do, stop off at Dolgok Falls, where the low level of light not to mention protection from trees, is the ideal mix to experiment with long shutter speeds. This shot is handheld, assisted by two image stabilizers at a quarter of a second at 200 ISO. So a filter was not required to reduce the level of light, it was low enough already. Sheltered from prevailing winds by Kada Idris, the highest mountain in southern Snowdonia, is Dogathli. If busy, retreat to the Torrent Walk for an easy path through woodland by animated waters, or follow a road contouring the northern flank of Kada to Klinor Kregenen, an oasis seemingly devoid of people. Now further along a gated road, Glorious views soon open up northwards to the main massive of Snowdon. At one's feet is Barmouth, our next port of call. But we shall explore a fabulous location away from the holiday crowds. Out of Barmouth and up a steep hill is the Panorama Walk and one of the most attractive views in Wales, the Malthac Estuary and the Cambrian Mountains. Now, note the importance of foreground interest to aid composition. Depth of field settings are important to maintain overall sharpness. This is achieved with a small aperture, wide angle lens, or a combination of both, plus the hyperfocal distance, bringing the focus point forward from infinity. Taken at the same time is this shot, which technically couldn't be more different, and it was quite demanding. The high dynamic range requires more from the photographer than a high-tech camera can provide on its own. I changed the metering first to spot, selected a highlight, saved the raw, and then lightened shadows a bit in Adobe Lightroom. John Ruskin loved the area, and it is crammed with highlights, such as this delightful toll bridge near Dolgethley. One of the best locations for sunsets over Cardigan Bay are the slopes of Linus Ole above Barmouth. Again, spot metered plus a bit of luck regarding weather. Continuing up the coast, passing Llandanuk Beach and Harlech Castle, 
one of several built to the orders of Edward I, we eventually reach Beth Gellert. But first, a quick diversion into Blyneye Festiniog for its railway. Again, an ideal subject for the wet day. During an overnight stay at Beth Gellert, I was fortunate to witness a wonderful misty morning. Exposure, again, was tricky, ensuring that the mist did not bleach out into a pure white, which can so easily happen, as with waterfalls too. The tree starburst was achieved by precise spot metering, plus a bit of adjustment in lightroom. Moving on from Beth Gellert, the mood changes. Joining Telford's highway to Bettisacoid, we explore Llyn Craftnant, tucked out of sight in its own side valley off the Conwy River, and it is less frequented. But to finish, I return to the honeypots, and whilst it might be an ambition to climb Snowdon, which I have done twice, the unique atmosphere of the highest mountain in Wales can be experienced by taking the miners' track from Penna Pass to the point where it becomes rather steep. Carry on if you wish. photographic drama, the glitters and Triven come very close to eclipsing Snowden. Ogwen Cottage gets busy, cars are parked all over the place and at every conceivable lay-by, so arrive instead on the Snowden Sherpa. The walk around Llyn Idwell, although uneven, is not too demanding, but it too gets busy. I have managed to find some quiet moments. Views open up at every turn amidst a dramatic landscape that captures the imagination of many photographers. I quite like the contre approach, helped again by spot metering with a mirrorless camera. Somehow, this shot seems to keep appearing in most portfolios. You might gather from this selection in this program that I favour images of high contrast. This is not to everyone's taste, I am aware of that, but the technique is still demanding, requiring a close marriage between photo technique and computer software. I don't follow trends. I underexpose, yes, I underexpose to help the dynamic range and then correct in Lightroom. It is not without its own problems, but most of the time it is solved by experience, which of course cannot be taught and not learnt from a rule book. <laughs> 